While the X-Men universe is filled with deadly mutants with extraordinary powers, Maverick is one of the most unique mutants in this universe. Also known as Christoph Nord, Maverick was a mercenary for hire, and he was first introduced in the X-Men comics in 1991 by Jim Lee and John Byrne. He used to work for the CIA's Team X and eventually became a subject for the Weapon X program. Maverick had quite a long story arc and his presence is spread all across the X-Men comics as well as TV shows. Today, we will explore this ruthless mercenary and tell you everything about his history and origins. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Look, you don't know what you're doing. You're under their control. The person you... How Christoph Nord became a notorious mercenary. Christoph Nord was born in former East Germany and was a soldier and idealist who fought against the communist regime during the Cold War. He had joined the West German underground and even worked with a military unit known as Cell 6. Later, Christoph traveled to Venice to stop an assassination and ran into one of his arch enemies named Confessor. Since Christoph was relatively young then, Confessor easily defeated him and pushed him off a chapel roof. Since his powers had not fully manifested by then, Christoph ended up with a few injuries and was admitted to a hospital for six months. Here, he fell in love with Ginetta Barcellini and the two soon got married in Sicily. However, Nord was unaware of the fact that Ginetta was a double agent working for the KGB and that they had sent her to keep an eye on him. After his Cell 6 team ends up getting ambushed by the Soviet troops, he emerges as the sole survivor and finally realizes that his wife has betrayed him. When Ginetta knew her true identity was out, she tried to attack Christoph with a kitchen knife, but he eventually managed to kill her. Christoph shot at her twice, and Janetta told him she was pregnant with his child as she took her last breaths. Some of his major comic book story arcs. After his wife's death, Christoph realized that he had lost everything and he became a ruthless soldier with nothing more left to lose. He was quite a deadly mercenary and he soon caught the eye of the CIA, who saw him as the perfect candidate to join their Team X. Team X was a CIA black ops team and Christoph moved to America and changed his name to David North when he joined the group. He even made acquaintances with Wolverine, Sabretooth and Kestrel, who also worked in Team X and the CIA sent them on numerous different missions. Sometimes they were also used for experiments arranged by Weapon X. None of the Team X members knew that the CIA was giving them false memory implants to wipe out any information about their missions. During one of these experiments, North was also given an aging suppressant derived from Wolverine's healing factor. He continued to go on many missions and Wolverine and Sabretooth was severely injured on one such mission in East Germany. North then got direct orders to leave them behind, but he ignored them and dragged their bodies up to the borders. At the borders, he came face to face with his brother Andreas Nord, who fought for the East Germans. Andreas tried to kill North and even told him that he would let him go only if he lets go of Logan and Creed. North then decided to kill his brother to save his teammates, and Wolverine greatly respected North for making such a tough decision. During another mission, they were sent to find a device known as the Carbonadium Synthesizer, which was used by Omega Red to keep on living. When Wolverine managed to find the device, Team X was defeated by Omega Red and they eventually retreated. Wolverine had doubts about the CIA, so he handed the synthesizer to North instead. North stashed the device in a safe place, while Omega Red often targeted him and Wolverine in order to get it back. Life after working for Team X After a decade or so, the CIA eventually got rid of Team X and all the team members were captured by Weapon X to use them as subjects for their experiments. When Wolverine's skeleton was bonded with adamantium, he went into a fit of rage which enabled North and the others to escape the facility. North then started working as a ruthless mercer known as Maverick and he used his mutant powers to undertake difficult jobs while committing murders and espionage. Eventually, Eventually, Maverick was among the many mutants that had contracted the deadly legacy virus, which was released by Strife in an attempt to kill all mutants. While Maverick was in hiding after contracting the virus, a woman named Elena Ivanova approached him and asked him for his help in tracking down Sabretooth. Elena claimed that Sabretooth had killed her mother and Maverick agreed to come out of hiding to help her. However, Omega Red soon located him and went after him to get his synthesizer back. 
Kestrel finally showed up to their rescue, and Maverick and Elena managed to escape Omega Red. Maverick then decided to seek treatment for the virus, and he also made acquaintance with another mutant named Bolt at the clinic. An organization called the Friends of Humanity tried to bomb the clinic to wipe out the mutants, and Maverick saved Bolt from this explosion. He later helped him settle down and adopt a new identity, often coming to his rescue from time to time. As Maverick's condition worsened due to the virus, his heart finally stopped beating for a whole minute until Elena used her powers to bring him back to life with a blast of energy. They soon realize that he is in remission from the virus and that his powers are finally working again. He also seemed to have mutated in newer ways and his powers became almost 10 times stronger than before. This also destroyed his fake memory implants and Maverick was finally free from the damage done by Weapon X to some extent. He eventually accompanied Elena to a hotel where she tried tracked Sabretooth, while Maverick ran into a mutant named Blob and got into a bar fight with him. Revival of the Weapon X Program After the Weapon X Program was revived, Sabretooth was sent to track Maverick and Kestrel and bring them back to the Weapon X facility. When the two of them refused to do so, Sabretooth killed Kestrel and even attacked Maverick. After being brutally attacked, Maverick was dragged to the Weapon X facility, where his body was subject to some new tests that upgraded his body. He was also programmed to kill Wolverine, and Weapon X took additional measures such as removing all body odor, giving him a vibranium suit and an enhanced healing factor that would help him in his mission. He was also able to shoot a dangerous chemical to destabilize his opponent's healing factors by just aiming his fingertips at them. Maverick then assumed a new identity as Agent Zero, and his first mission was to go after Wolverine and kill him. Agent Zero was also handed a specially designed anti-metal firing rifle to kill Wolverine, but he missed his mark and stated that he accidentally failed to kill Wolverine. Weapon X program's director did not take his word for this and decided to punish Agent Zero with powerful electric shocks. The director was a cruel entity who kept punishing Agent Zero with these electric shocks to assert control over him. Eventually, Sabretooth tries to escape the program and Agent Zero attacks him and almost kills him. However, it was later declared that Agent Zero had supposedly died at the hands of Sabretooth. After learning the news about Maverick's death, his friend Bolt stepped up and decided to avenge his death. He trained himself, got a suit similar to Maverick's suit, and started pretending to be him. During one of his missions, Bolt infiltrated a terrorist group and showed up at the scene of a bombing when Maverick finally showed up in his Agent Zero costume. While Bolt was dressed as Maverick, the real Maverick was unaware that this was his friend, and he ended up shooting him due to a misunderstanding. While Bolt was trying to aim his gun at a bomber, Maverick assumed that he was trying to kill him, and he unknowingly killed his friend. While Bolt died without knowing that Maverick was the same person as Agent Zero, Maverick later blamed the terrorist group named Gene Nation for his death. He killed every member of this group in a fit of rage, and ensured that his friend's death did not go in vain. Decimation and later story arcs During the M-Day and Decimation storylines, Scarlet Witch managed to depower almost all of the mutants on Earth, and Maverick also lost his powers during this incident. He sought the help of other mutants and even joined support groups to deal with the loss of his mutant abilities, and he ran into Omega Red during one of these meetings arranged by a mutant named Jubilee. Wolverine stepped in and rescued Maverick from Omega Red, while Maverick struggled to defend himself without his powers. Omega Red not only got his synthesizer back, but he also kidnapped Jubilee before escaping. Maverick returned to his old lifestyle and started working as a mercenary again. He even stole some important Weapon X files and sold them off on the black market. Maverick had also kick-started the Strike Force X program that included a team of agents who were testing on humans. He later tried to hide his involvement in this program from Wolverine, and he even helped Wolverine take down this program later. Maverick was later contacted by Inter to pole when they needed someone to capture Dr. Doom and bring him to them. Maverick agreed to do this job even though he was not a fan of Interpol, and he eventually succeeded in ensuring that Dr. Doom surrendered to the authorities.
Maverick during Wolverine Dawn of X While various mutants worldwide immigrated to the new mutant nation of Krakoa, Maverick chose his path and returned to his mercenary lifestyle. He eventually was subjected to another mind-wiping project that left him with no memories and made him a pawn in someone else's game. Maverick was then auctioned off in a criminal underground sale and Wolverine came to his rescue by infiltrating the auction. While Wolverine tries to convince Maverick to come to Krakoa, he rejects this offer and states that he does not trust the mutants anymore. He even questions Wolverine's newfound faith in this mutant cult and the two of them go on one last mission together to raid a thrift store and cover any signs of any mutants who had left their belongings there. The two of them go their ways and Maverick decides to live on his terms without working for anyone else. Maverick had a few major appearances in X-Men the Animated Series. Maverick once appeared in the X-Men Animated Series in an episode titled Deadly Reunion, which first aired in 1993. In this episode, Professor Charles Xavier uses his powers to enter Sabretooth's mind to figure out what is troubling him. Maverick had fought alongside Sabretooth, Wolverine and Team X to fight Omega Red during the Cold War, and they had struggled to defeat him since he was essentially a living weapon created by the Soviet Union. He later appeared in the 16th episode of this show in the episode titled Whatever It Takes. In this episode, Wolverine tries to find one of the X-Men named Morph to convince him to return to the team and he travels around Africa to find him. He eventually finds him in an old mineshaft and follows him there to find Maverick and Omega Red is also present at the scene. In this episode, Morph takes the form of Maverick in order to taunt Wolverine and get a reaction out of him. He extensively appears in the show's fourth season in an episode titled Weapon X Lies and Videotape. This episode marked the only appearance of Team X in the animated X-Men series. It revolved around Wolverine as he received a map with the coordinates of the ruins of the Weapon X lab and decided to visit the place. As Wolverine arrives at the lab, he gets some flashes from the past and realizes that someone is trying to mess with his mind. When Beast arrives at the lab and calms him down, he realizes that Wolverine was experiencing flashes from when he was trained to be a killer. Sabretooth soon arrives at the scene and reveals that he also received a similar map and he and Wolverine end up fighting when they are both experiencing flashbacks from the time they fought Omega Red as a team. Maverick and Silver Fox also show up at the lab and they all realize that the Weapon X program has been messing with their heads. They conclude that the program did something to their memories and that a lot of their memories were faked and planted in their heads. Beast then finds a computer in the lab that shows them that all four of them had been hypnotized during the program so that they could control them and eventually summon them back to the Weapon X facility. While Maverick, Wolverine, Silver Fox and Sabretooth try to process this information, they discover a door that can be unlocked by their DNA. They open the door and find a video message that states that a robot named Talos has been assigned to kill all four of them. As Talos tries to attack the mutants, Silver Fox and Sabretooth distract the robot, while Maverick and Wolverine try to kill the robot. They manage to destroy him but soon find that a new robot replaces the older one. Eventually, a mental blast causes all four mutants to fall unconscious while Beast steps in and puts them all in a vehicle. As Beast drives away with the mutants in the truck, the lab blows up behind them along with the Talos robots. As the episode ends, the four mutants go their separate ways while Wolverine and Beast talk about memories. His role in X-Men Origins Wolverine Maverick also appeared in the 2009 X-Men Origins Wolverine film, wherein he had a different identity as David North. He was one of the mutants in the Weapon X program and played the role of a villain who stirred up trouble for Wolverine. Furthermore, the movie's producer Lauren Donner even stated that Maverick makes for a formidable villain because he has no scent, which makes it quite tricky for Logan to track him. After James Howlett, also known as Logan, witnesses his 
father's murder at the hands of Thomas Logan. He attacks Thomas and realizes that he has grown claws. In a shocking turn of events, Thomas tells him that he is his real father before Logan kills him with his newly grown claws. Logan then escapes to place with Thomas's other son, Victor Creed, who also shows the same signs of mutation. They then spend the next hundred years fighting as soldiers in the World Wars and the Vietnam War before Victor finally gets into trouble due to his violent nature. After being sentenced to execution, Major William Stryker rescues the two of them and asks them to join Team X. Maverick was one of the members of this team among other mercenaries such as Wade Wilson and Fred Dukes and Logan and Victor soon accepted this offer. However, Logan eventually realized that Victor's aggressive nature and lack of empathy made him uncomfortable, so he decided to leave the team. After a few years, Logan settled in Canada with his girlfriend Kayla Silverfox. Major Stryker and Agent Zero, aka Maverick, visited him to talk about how many of their team members had been killed and that someone was targeting them. Logan refuses to help them and later finds his girlfriend's bloodied body in the woods. He realizes that Victor is behind this and soon comes face to face with his half-brother who seems to have gone rogue. Major Stryker proposes a new plan and tells Logan that he has a way by which he can become a lot stronger than Victor and overpower him. Logan agrees to undergo an operation that reinforces his skeleton with the powerful metal known as adamantium. He later overhears Stryker's plans to erase his memories and make him his minion. Logan then decides to escape and he gets some help from an elderly couple at a nearby farm. However, Stryker sends Maverick to track him down and he reaches this farm and kills the couple. While Maverick tries to kill Logan, he fails to do so and Logan easily overpowers him and swears to kill Stryker and Victor as well. Logan then targets Maverick's helicopter and blows it up, which results in Maverick's death. So long, Logan. It was good to see you. Yeah. What makes Maverick a deadly opponent? Maverick was one of the most powerful mutants and he possessed the strength of up to 10 humans. Maverick's mutant powers enabled him to absorb the kinetic energy from any attack and then use this energy to shoot blasts at his opponents. He was also extremely intelligent and was an expert in espionage and stealth operations. He had a regenerative healing factor similar to Wolverine's and his body was highly durable and agile. He could also blast energy at his opponents and injure them from a distance. Maverick was a skilled marksman and carried various weapons including rifles, plasma blasters, knives and bullets coated with adamantium. Since he had spent most of his life as a mercenary, he was quite an expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat. While working under the alias of Agent Zero, Maverick wore a specially designed suit of armor that made it quite difficult for his opponents to defeat him. When Maverick was programmed to kill Wolverine after being recaptured by Weapon X, he was given a vibranium suit of armor that allowed him to move without making any sound. This suit of armor also refracted light and made him completely invisible in total darkness. He was also skilled at managing technology and computer equipment and had a lot of experience with communication equipment. Zero. Still shooting first, asking questions later. You still chewing on cheap cigars? Conclusion To sum it up, Maverick was indeed an integral part of Team X and he went on many important missions along with other mutants such as Wolverine and Sabretooth. He had faced many hardships and emerged from them as an undefeatable mutant who managed to survive even the worst situations. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.